So, dude, yeah, what do you think about the sound? This is crazy, bro, because this is my new favorite argument. I don't know if you've been here for a minute, but the whole, like, I'm going to say it really fast because I know you can follow it, right? But, like, um, you can't claim that Newton is correct and that the Earth is orbiting the sun at the same time, right? Because Michelson Morley literally debunked Newton if the Earth is orbiting. Uh, you, you know, obviously, because... Uh, you claim that an uh, object will continue in a straight path unless an external or outside force acts upon it, which would, of course, cause an interference pattern because you would detect that outside force on the Earth itself. That's where Einstein comes in and says, oh, it's not actually curving with an external force. It's actually still traveling straight with linear velocity only. It's just free-falling through a geodesic path of curved space-time. Therefore, from the reference frame of the Earth, it's going straight in a straight line. So you wouldn't detect the linear velocity with interferometry, which is why you can't detect the Earth's orbit. And if Newton was correct, you would have an external force acting on the Earth from the Earth's reference point actually curving it literally therefore you would detect it therefore they had to come in and save the day with einstein so you could literally and quite objectively cannot claim newtonian gravity and the earth is orbiting the sun at the same time yeah so and when you put it like that it's so obviously arbitrarily ad hoc that it's in like a geodesic like that right yeah especially when they try to then go and claim rotation of the earth for the actual measurable effect like, it's just absolutely incoherent. Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compliment that argument, dude. So, you know how they say, and this is in regards to how oh, all motions actually, you know, traveling along the curvature of space-time or whatever, right? So, in, in regards to absolute velocity, right? So, GPS satellites, right, that are so-called proof of relativity and all these things, did you know that, they're, that, the, that there's a, a retardation rate and the clock's proportional to their velocity? So the way that they correct the, the correct the atomic clocks and satellites, you know, so-called, right, as they're free falling around the Earth in orbit. So in their model, the free fall orbit of a satellite is an inertial frame, right? It's falling in a gravitational well, blah blah blah, right? So it shouldn't be able, it shouldn't have any uh, uh, reference to its velocity or anything like that, right? But the clock inside of it uh, retards proportional to the velocity, right? So they sagnet correct it. Right, so the same equation that predicts the Sagnac effect, right? So the length, uh, the distance of the area traveled, or for light, and then the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The angular velocity or linear velocity, right? So as Wang showed, linear velocity is equally equivalent. So the clocks account for their own velocity relative to the ECI to the center of the ECI reference frame. Well, the center of the ECI reference frame is a mathematical concept. It's not your absolute velocity wouldn't be relative to a mathematical construct that's re that's retarded it's it's literally proportional to the to your velocity uh through the ether wind so that's how they that's how they correct their clocks man correction 22 and right? and, and yeah and, and exactly and in addition to that if the orbital velocities existed all right like the 30 kilometers a second and all that shit so when these satellites in orbit when they're when they're parallel and perpendicular to the uh for, to those planes of motion they would have to account for those velocities, right? If they're making velocity corrections. So these clocks, isn't it? It's uh, oddly enough, right? They don't desynchronize at any, uh, there's no like uh, anomalous desynchronizations where they're in line with these orbits. So they're all, uh, you know, accounting for their own velocity relative to the ether wind. And they're telling everyone that they're accounting for the relative velocity relative to a coordinate system. Crazy. Wow, bro. Yep. And it gets even worse than that, too. So, uh, you know how all reference frames are supposed to be equally valid? So this is in regards to the satellite orbits, right? So you know how we see them on their uh, elliptical paths or whatever, right? So if you were on another reference frame somewhere else in the solar system, Mars, for example, you wouldn't see uh, the same kind of orbital path that we do. You would see, the, like, the, the true, the equal uh, in all reference frame motion, right? you would see that they're traveling along a curve. So they're instead of an elliptical orbit, it would be like a uh, kind of like a, I guess like a semicircle, really not really completing a circle, just following a curve. Right. And that velocity, like the way that that works, like the, um, the change in speed to complete that orbit, right. Isn't accounted for. Right. Like, so they only, they're, they're specifically synced to the, to a geocentric, a geocentric frame. And they sync the clocks to the stars. So, and they correct for the absolute velocity through absolute space. What's up? Damn. 